like they don't have it actually on camera. You just hear the zzz and then making like fucking faces and bullshit. Well, and going like, that's sad as fuck, dude. Like going back to it, well, the NPC, like the NPC shit, you know, that's brain uh, rot, and that that that's another thing that's mm-hmm. away from uh, what we're talking about. That's brain rot, in my opinion. Mm. The stupidity. And I think that because uh, a lot of people are saying like, "Wow, well, ADHD, ADHD," and that ADHD. comes from that. Oh, I come from that. You get that from fucking TikTok because it's goddamn. Now they changed it, but at first it was fifteen seconds or less. Mm-hmm. And yeah, now, and now it's like nobody wants to look at anything that's more than like fifteen seconds. And that was uh holy shit that blows my mind. Even then, like when I'm sitting here watching like podcasts or even like doing podcasts. Um, like being able to be sit there and be locked into a podcast for an hour, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, even then, like with reading, you know, um, I was watching a, uh, or actually it was a little, um, it was a paper I had because you just said something about my this being a Google machine, and uh, I actually found this from. Um, what was it? He found something from school. I'm letting y'all know what he's telling me. He found something that um, reminded, or he's talking about something that reminded him of. When I said Google machine and that he found something from, uh, you said school, yeah, right? From high school. Yeah, this was from high school. I'm just letting the people know because you yeah. dipped off with. Yeah, no, I was like, a, shit. It's an article called, Is Google Making Us Stupid? Right on. Yeah. And so um, by Nicholas Carr, and it's like about what the internet's doing to our brains. And so it's t- essentially it starts off talking about how, like, he said, um, so the first goes it says dave stop stop will you said dave will you stop dave said, so the supercomputer hal pleads with the impossible astronaut dave bauman in a famous and weirdly poignant scene toward the end of stanley kubrick's 2001 a space odyssey so bauman having nearly been sent to a deep space death by a malfunctioning machine is calmly coldly disconnecting the memory circuits that control its artificial brain it's like dave my mind is going how says for lo- for long what the fuck okay I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it too. Over the past few years, I've had an uncomfortable, uncomfortable sense that someone or something has been tinkering with my brain, remapping the central, the neural, the neural circuitry, and reprogramming the memory. My mind isn't going so far as I can tell, but it's changing. I'm not thinking the way I used to think, and I can feel it most strongly when I'm reading. Immersing myself in a book or a lengthy article used to be easy, and my mind would get caught up in the narrative or the turns of the argument, and I'd spend hours strolling through long stretches of prose. That's rarely the case anymore. Now that my concentration often starts to drift after two or three pages, I get fidgety, lose the thread, begin looking for something else to do. TikTok. You know, I fear, <laughs> well, this was written, this was written back in, um, this was 2007, 2008. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so, um, instead, I, uh, Fidgety, lose a thread, begin looking for something else to do. I feel as if I'm always dragging my wayward brain back to the text. That deep reading that I used to come naturally has been a struggle. And like I said, this is something that was written back in like 2007, 2008. And that's the crazy thing about the internet, too. When did you uh, hmm? get that? When did you get that? This was a... What Do you know what year in high school? I believe this was 2015. Team. So that was at the so beginning been of Vine. Year. That was the beginning of Vine. A Vine? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Really? It was. Holy fuck. Holy That's shit. That's when it all fucking really started. That, Holy shit. How, that whole uh, 15 seconds, 7 second ordeal. Mm. Yeah, you're looking at me crazy. No, nah, I don't think, I think about it. Holy shit. Yeah. You huh. see what I'm saying? And so. You didn't even fucking know it. Well, it I, right I, I, I remember because we talked about it. We, we used to talk about how like, oh, Vine, Vine walks so TikTok could run. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So like, and we that's all we used to do was Vine. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yep. Um, even then, like, you can take a look at like Twitter too with um, the um, the restrictions on the amount of character, which is why Elon took it off. Mm-hmm. The restrictions on the amount of characters, because not only it's two things. Not only does the restriction on the amount of characters force you to say something, but it forces you, and goes back to the word you hate so much, size. clout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It forces you to say the most outrageous, outrageous thing within the certain ramifications which you have. Right on. You know what I'm saying? And now, and now versus, and this is why I like what, that Elon took the character limit away, 
because now if you're reading something, you're not just reading the synopsis of it. You know what I mean? Yep. There's a whole in-depth Article. thing that you can read about it. Report. You know, but still people don't want to necessarily go through that and read it, you know? But even then, you got tweet from certain profile, which is like one sentence. Tweet from certain profile, which is one sentence. So your mind is just constantly jumping from one thought to another, you know? And so I think that's why a lot of people have this, you know, onset ADHD symptoms, which I, I'm not saying that people don't have ADHD, but I would say the symptoms are becoming more and more no, because. No, but a lot of things, I, I really do believe that a lot of people fucking just say that they have ADHD when all in all, in all you just have a fucking terrible sh- uh, attention span, bro. Mm hmm. You have a terrible attention span because of Instagram, because of Twitter, because of TikTok. Like, mm. I hate whenever there is, like, a screenshot of an article or some shit, and it has, like, let's say, like, a paragraph or some shit, right? Mm. And then the replies are like, that's too long, bro. I didn't read it all. It was too long. Like, it's not my fault. Holy shit. I'm sorry. No, that, mm. that, <laughs> no you're <laughs> that good. You're like, good. You're holy good. fucking shit. Is your brain rotting so much you can't read a fucking paragraph? Mm-hmm. Holy fucking shit get your shit together and it's almost like formulating original thought you know oh my f- bro formulating original. that's the fucking worst part about Dude. twitter and shit like mm-hmm. that you can't fucking think of an original fucking thought that's what i'm saying you're in a you're in a fucking echo chamber exactly holy sh- Bro, this exactly. God <laughs> damn, bro. <laughs> exactly. You know, fuck. I always think about that shit, you and know? it drives me up a fucking wall of how much you can create an echo chamber from for yourself on fucking social media, on Twitter, on YouTube, especially. Um, Instagram's not as much because it's more or less just pictures. Um, it's not as much people's thoughts, but I would say Instagram builds that. Um, that perceived envy of oh other people, my God. you know what I'm saying? Depends on who I you deleted that shit. Depends on who you are. See, now I only use it for like just podcast reasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? And maybe just a, I don't even need to put my family on there. You know what I mean? I, I really don't. I I, got, was, I don't need to put like anything about my life on there because I just use it for as. A the thing that sense. kills me about that and like Facebook, Facebook, it happens a lot, is when they post them, someone's with like their fucking family and shit, like. Fucking Johnny got a fucking single today in T ball. Mm. Isn't he so fucking good at fucking ba- T ball baseball? Mm. Bitch, you're just posting that so you can fucking piss on somebody. You're pissing, you're trying to piss off your fucking, um, Some, uh, your husband's fucking brother whose kid <laughs> can't even run around a fucking base I for would. whatever the reason. And you're just trying to be like, he got a single today and he scored a run. Isn't he so good at fucking baseball? Bitch. I wouldn't even say it's that Come thing. Come on, man. I think a lot of parents are proud, you know? And I think that social media has made it to where it's easier to take pride and stuff because you can what post it and show it to everybody. What? Where do we draw the line at proud, uh, pride and uh, attention seeking? Exploiting, exploiting your kids for... Or attention seeking, yeah, you attention know. seeking. You know what I'm saying? What it, I'm saying? That's, think, what it really like, that's what it feels like to me. Like, whenever you are constantly posting and I... I'm really not trying to talk shit. I understand, like, if you need support, you need, su- you need support. But I just don't, cannot wrap my fucking head around telling people your business, whether it's, like, your kid going through surgery, your mom's going through surgery, you're going through surgery, and you're asking for fucking prayers and thoughts. How come you can't go to your best friend and tell him, like, hey, bro, I, I go to Caleb. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm really struggling with... Uh, having my procedure done. Do you have any fucking thoughts or anything that you can tell me some advice? Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Are you doing that before you go on fucking Facebook saying, please give me your thoughts and prayers as I go into fucking surgery tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think it's... Fucking pisses me off. I I understand. I, I can understand why it makes you mad, you know, because... In a sense, you're like, you should have a tight knit. Why? Why are you telling? Why are you telling everybody your business? Exactly. You know yes. what I mean? Oh my god, that fucking it, makes to, me so upset. You know what I'm saying? And um, I had to get out of that too. You know, of like telling people not, your business. Not everybody needs to know your business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I thought it. I thought it because I thought it was under the guise of like you build a when you're upfront and true about yourself. 
you build a sense of community with other people. You know what I mean? My, that's my point. You know, having a, a close uh, friend group and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But and that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're struggling, bro, you're mentally struggling with something, whether it's work, whether it's you have a surgery that you're worried about, something of the sort. Why can't you go to Caleb? You know, why can't I go to Gavin? Why can't I go to Clayton and just ask him like, hey, bro, like. Can you pick me up? Can you talk to me? Like I'm really struggling right now. I think a lot. Of Doesn't so- make sense, bro. And it, it just makes me feel like you are grasping at whatever somebody can fucking give you. Hmm. Where you can't. You're and that's flimsy, bro. That's so fucking flimsy to me. You should have friends that you can fucking rely on for that shit. Well, I think that's also because we live in a, a society of flimsy ideologies, too. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Flimsy yeah. ideologies, flimsy belief systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because I, I, I can understand. And, like, I, yeah. I think going back to it is it goes back to the cloud is a hell of a drug. You know what I mean? Motherfucker. Hey, cause Attention it, is a hell of a y- fucking drug. You know what I'm saying? Likes and Likes, comments, comments, and, and, and people be and people seeing you and being like, "Oh, I okay, I, under- yes! I identify with your struggle." Yes, and it makes like, you feel more. Oh, I hope everything's okay, Shirley. Mm. Everything's gonna be all right. Just believe in God, and I'm not hating on uh, religion and shit like mm. that. Mm. But like when you are seeking out fucking attention for pisses thought, me off thoughts and prayer, or like even then going to do you not go to church? Me? Oh, no, no, I mean like no, uh, no, no. no for people for like asking someone yeah, yeah, like yeah, or yeah. like uh, right. send, please send thoughts and prayers. Like, did you not go to the church? And, uh, the prayer hat, the prayer uh, request. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to drop a prayer request and in the, in the, <laughs> leave a prayer request in the little mm-hmm. box out front, and I like, about that. That's you really, know what I'm saying. Fucking point. <sighs> See, I was also thinking about. Hmm. You think it's a boundary thing as well? People don't have like people are getting boundaries. rid of boundaries. Uh, you know. People don't have personal boundaries of, their, of themselves. God, I, say I just ba- don't think they care whether to uh, actually set those boundaries or not. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I'll be honest with you, I just had to restart the podcast just now because the, the audio wasn't on. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so we restarted. We start. <laughs> yeah, for real? That, that's why I had to look on my face earlier of like, <laughs> no. I, I slowly did it so like you wouldn't really notice. I was like, I'm just going to wait start this shit real how quick. long have we been going uh no, oh bro now it's been like uh in total about a good hour 12 what about the vid- the audio but uh now uh oh now the audio the actual audio and video we've been going for about a good 12 minutes now damn that's so sad oh it's okay though honestly because we uh, talk good about Tra- uh travis hunter though oh no yeah I we, really we, like we, I mean, we, we can get we can get back to it even um because I still had some That's more stuff. so fucking funny. I still had some more stuff to say about it. Uh, well, really, I was going to bring it all encompass. I like to encompass my big podcast and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, going back to, uh, like, boundaries and, like, knowing a personal boundary of, like, okay, I don't have to say this to people. You know what I mean? And uh, I say that with boundaries because uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier with football. And because um, I've been on this wave. I, I said something the other day. And I... Um, I told my, I said it to my dad, and my dad said, "Ooh, be careful with that." Cause I said inclusion was a lie. Of what? Inclusion in ge- in general, the sense of inclusion. Like in business and whatnot. Not, not in business, but like in the sense of like, oh, we can all be together, cause you know, or being, um, <laughs> or like, um, for instance, I have, uh, uh, what was the one of like, uh, you seen the recent one of the girl that played? Uh, she stepped on the field to play D three football. Uh, playing DB, uh, I saw the chick who was a kicker. Or mm. there was or one chick who was a Jackson kicker. State. There was one chick who was a kicker. That. There was one chick who was a DB. Oh, the white girl who was yeah. playing safety. Yeah, 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 yeah played yeah, safety yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, man, there were so many. Uh, you on one hand, it's like okay, that's cool. You know, can you take the fucking hits? As a football player, bro, she gonna get fucked. No, no, no. If you got subbed out to put her in, how would you feel? Is that what you're saying? You know, you know, you know. You, you, think about it. Think about it. Just, you know, and it's not a thing. Of, and people are gonna say, "Oh, misog- misogyny." Look, shut the fuck up. All right, look. As like, a football player, like we just said, well, we, we were talking about it earlier, but before I realized the podcast wasn't on. But um, football takes a mentality that like not a lot of people possess. Okay, of being able to run full speed into somebody else. And get back Not up, give a shit. and get back up, and run another play, and still be coherent. Like, okay, next play, and it's thinking, constantly thinking and going. It's just something that 
I'm not putting a girl out there to, I'm not setting a girl up for failure. I'm not setting her up to get hurt, potentially. Because think about, think of that, because she came off the edge, right? Mm-hmm. Think of that left tackle just caught her real quick. That's what I was going to say. And you see what they do to grown men. And, she's going to get headhunted. And you see what they do to grown men. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying it's like, uh, and then they're making fun of it because she had got a, Q- a QB uh, pressure. pressure or whatever. But then uh, she took him to the ground and they were like, bro, it's a. Uh, it was, it was roughing the passer. <laughs> they didn't throw the flag. It was low key roughing the passer because, <laughs> but they didn't throw the flag. And then the way they said it in the article, they were like, "Yeah, she hit the she hit the quarterback and the pass was incomplete. The receiver dropped it. <laughs> the receiver dropped the pass. And it was roughing the passer. But the way they um the way they formed it I was mean, like they're always gonna hype up that bullshit. And and again, it's nothing that's like it's a good story. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that it's a bad thing. You know, I don't think anybody is saying it's a bad thing. You know what I mean? I think it comes down to this is not something that we should be ushering girls to go play with the boys, play football with the boys. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think we should do that. You know, I mean, it's a a feel good story. And she looked pretty built, honestly. I was like, okay, maybe. You know what I mean? But playing DB, especially safety, (laughs) in the box, in the box. Box safety. Dog. And she was rushing. Uh, she was literally Someone rushing. Clip her ass, bro. bro, imagine if the imagine if the running back came over and just cut, like see see the rusher doesn't see a girl sees a rusher on the football field, yeah. you know, and goes under cut block square to the knees yeah, 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 exactly. or a hip shot because yeah. girls' hips are delicate, mm-hmm. and that's what get you know. Not saying and again like we had girls who um, there was a girl we played with. Um, Matter of fact, you remember um, she played basketball in high school with us, uh, Caitlin Francis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She um, she used to come out there and play football with us, you know, because there's a big girl. Because there's a there are those girls who can do that. Yeah, you know, she can get out there and take a hit with us, you know. And, and there were times where like we might hit her a little hard, but she'd be oh, be, oh shit, you know, like my bad, my bad, you know, but like bad, same time she knows like okay, I got this, and she was a hell of an athlete too. Yes, yeah, she was. You know? So like it's not a thing of like women can't do it. It's just, some women can. I shouldn't. We just shouldn't be telling everybody to do it, you know. If she works hard enough, she. If she works hard enough and earn the spot, then yes, it's just hard. She does her homework. She watches film. Mm. She does more reps than what is supposed to. It's hard to think that. Let her rock, bro. It's just hard to think that, especially at the college level, that she's good enough to sub in for someone else. It's hard to believe. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, you have to see. But then again, bro, like, uh, so let's tie this back into the HBCUs. The reason why I think that talent is so undervalued is because those motherfuckers had to work so goddamn hard to get to that point. Mm. How hard do you think she has had to work to get to that point, bro? Mm. And I'm not. And listen, bro, it could be politics. It could be politics that she's just getting the spot because she's a woman. Like, you Mm. know, that's a big time fucking possibility but what if she actually has put in the goddamn work to be able to fucking get there and then again to that point you understand what i'm saying as a coach and then again as a coach you're not putting anybody on the field you think is unprepared exactly you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so hmm. or who hasn't done their due diligence to get to that point and and, you know i'm saying watching film extra reps so on fair enough fair enough i just i mean okay yeah, because, like, all I saw was the one play. You know what I mean? Yes. And they've... Who pra- knows, bro? I would love to watch the... All, uh, they've practiced with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And so maybe in practice, she can take a lick. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like... But just from the optics of it, and from a, just a... Standpoint. Standpoint of, like... It just seems so... What? Wild. You know? Of... Like, like they throw grown men around. They throw 300-pound men around. What do you think they're going to do that with a 150-pound girl? You know? And it's like, it goes back to like the thing of inclusion, but it goes back to the thing of like, why doesn't every guy play football? Because not every guy can do this shit. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For sure. You know, so it's like uh, that's why that's why the scrawny like, the, the scrawny kid uh, back when they had cuts in football, when kids would get cut from the team because they weren't oh, yeah, good yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. You know yep. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got cut from basketball eighth grade. I cried my ass off. <laughs> I cried my ass off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, cause it fucking like, cause. When you put in effort and you're like it, they say nah, and they say nah. It, there's that level. It's like what you know, and it's like so. I under like again. I understand. You know what I'm saying. But at the same time, it's like there's a reason why not everybody's included in everything. You know, mm-hmm. 
And I think that when you tell people that, it gives them a sense of inferiority, you know? I, I don't know if it necessarily gives... I, I can't I can't tell, you know? But I don't necessarily think... I think when people get excluded, it's like, well, why don't y'all want me? It's like, well... Sometimes you fucking suck and you can't do the goddamn job, motherfucker. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's a certain standard you have to meet to be on this team, mm-hmm. you know? If you don't meet that standard, you're not on the team. And that doesn't go for just sports. That goes that, that, to not, business. Not, that goes to it's class, school. Um, it goes to relationships. It goes to friend groups. It goes. To, it's everything. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, oh, and you're so, spinning, bro, you're and so uh, tying it back to what we were talking about earlier with the because um, I was uh, the, oh I say I think inclusion I think of a lot of the the pride stuff that gets spread around in schools and I asked the other time because they they always talking about like oh they have drag queen they have drag queens in the schools and stuff I'm like what happened to permission slips right on you know mm-hmm. I was like do do parents not sign permission slips anymore you know because remember you remember back in the day when it would be a PG thirteen movie you had to get and the, you had to get you had to sign exactly yeah. you had to take it home and again I don't think it's a th- I don't know if it's a thing of um, kids. Or them not having permission slips anymore, but I don't know if parents mm-hmm. just are aware of what's uh, going you on. You know what I'm saying? School, yeah. Or just kind of okay. What's this? You know, sign it. You do it. You do whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but it goes back to again standards, and you have what's normal and standard. You know what I mean? And anything that deviates from that isn't normal. You know what I mean? So, not that it's a bad thing, but it's not the norm. So people aren't used to it, and what people aren't used to, they're not going to be confused. You know what I mean? And so I think a lot of people, when these topics come up and when these topics happen, get too overly emotional at first, but also just can't think for a second of why hey, why do things, why are these things happening? You know what I mean? And um, I don't know, man. You know, because on, on, on one hand, it's like the normalities we live in are the sa- are safe for what we know what works. You know what I mean? And sometimes I ask myself, are we becoming too human? You know? You in the sense that are we figuring out, hey, why, like, why do we have to break down, why do we have so many podcasts nowadays that break down relationships? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's why, a hot topic. You know, like, oh, it's a hot topic. And a, and a lot of people want to push their agendas. Exactly. And so, but at the same time, why is it something that used to be just life? Why is it Have so complicated now? It? You know, why is it so complicated now? I think why does everybody have to have an opinion on you know, relationships, yeah. bro? Well, even, the, you know, you make Why a can't it just be two individuals mm-hmm. who just want to work, to get, work, work out with each other? They find something, a niche that's... I think that spills back into social media and computers spilling into real life. Right. Into mm-hmm. into yes. everyday life. Oh, my God, with the fucking relationships and shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the part where, and especially with the, with the articles talking about, um, cause even Elon Musk was talking about how, like, your phone's basically, you're basically a cyborg already. You have your phone. Your phone has everything preloaded on it that you don't already have in your head. Mm-hmm. So you just have it on your phone. Numbers, the numbers that you used to just, oh, yeah, that's their number. You know what I mean? It's all on here now. And so, I, uh, low-key, I've been thinking, like, they've been trying to make us into computers, slowly. I just immobilized. I think it's more, though. It's immobilized? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, because I was watching nature documentaries, right? And I was looking at it, and I was like, the li- like a lion? I was watching the lion eat the, fit up, eat the fuck out of a gazelle, right? And it looked ugly as shit, right? It's like, ugh. But I also realized, like, bro, this is just nature. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, so... And the humans have, we have that weird, I say we have that gift of being able to not only understand our own perception, but see past our own perception and even have the want to change it. The want and the, not only the want, desire, but uh, desire, but also the ability to oh, change yeah, yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a lion can never stop lining. You know what I mean? Unless you put them in a, a zoo. You know what I mean? You domesticate them, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um... And so, but w- getting back to that, I was looking at just more of like the the positive and negative of nature. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like uh, you said, the circle of life. You know, the lion's got to eat, so go eat, eat the gazelle. But soon the lion dies, the lion goes into the ground, and the g- gazelles eat the grass. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's that circle of life type so shit. So on and so forth, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that... Uh, so it goes back to that question of are we becoming too human and getting away from that natural animalistic side of being human? You know, of just letting things happen because it's natural. Yeah. Rather than trying Poor to get it. Trying Fine to get it. You know, trying to get ahead of everything of what might happen. I think one thing for certain, uh, at least going uh, with this relationship with Emily, which. We'll be going on five years next year. Pretty fucking crazy to say. A year and a half married? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, year and a half of marriage. Um, one thing for sure, man, there's got to be some common ground. Mm-hmm. What What made y'all have chemistry? Mm-hmm. We like to watch TV shows. We like to watch stand-up comedy. That's something that we do or watch a movie, mm-hmm. cook together, that type of thing. That's something that... For some people, it could be that they like working out together. Mm-hmm. They like going on walks together. They like going to the grocery store. They like going shopping together. Like, they just feel so comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. I think that's one. And what does that go back to? Something natural. I like natural. hanging around this person mm-hmm. whenever we're doing this certain activity. Mm-hmm. But this is a stand- uh, there's a standard of your relationship. Would you say there's a standard of y'all's relationship? Uh, Explain. Like, in a sense of, like, there's the things that y'all do. You know what I mean? And, like... And that we expect to be with each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Ex- yeah. Almost like I, I, I don't want to say expectations necessarily, but you do have expectations in a relationship. 100%. But there, But especially... You don't, you don't get fucking cheated on. Exactly. You don't but especially being in a, flirt with other people, yeah. Yeah, right. especially being in a five-plus year long-term relationship, mm-hmm. those expectations, after a while, are just... Not even necessarily an expectation. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's just what you do because it's just, that's just your person at that point. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because why fuck it up? Exactly. You know, I think she's got my back. Why fuck it up? That's what it is for me. Like, I just want somebody who had my back. Do you think that you understood yourself more before you were in the relationship or after? She's helped me understand. Um, how do I word this? She helped me it's hard like, to say. understand a lot of. Uh, emotions but really just the way that i react to a lot of things and the way that i um have my beliefs and the emotions that come out in certain things like whenever i get like upset about something uh she had like we both understand um why we were upset about a certain aspect uh that's one thing that for sure but and bro is it's probably going to keep on growing or just in general so when you say expectations and whatnot bro so our expectations are (laughs) in a sense that like if we are going over to like our parents house or something like that that we're not trying to stay too long Mm -hmm. because we don't want to feel like that we're stuck there you understand what i'm saying Mm. I want to hang out with my mom. More or less, y'all are on the same page. Same page. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all on the same plane, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, or on, what's a better word? Same general thought process. Same program. Y'all on the same program. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. um, I think, because uh, uh, going back to, like, just relationships in general, that everybody, like, people are saying, like, oh, I need to find myself before I get into a relationship. You know Which what I mean? Which you do, in a sense. You mm-hmm. do. I mean, you do have to know you know yourself and know what you and know. Love yourself. You need to love yourself. I think that's the big, the bigger thing. You, you know? can't find uh, someone to love you when you don't love yourself, bro. Do you think that comes with? Uh, I, well, also, I, obviously, I think that it comes with loving all sides of you, both the good, bad, and the ugly. Yes. Yeah. Do you, you know, having you have to acknowledge those parts of yourself within yourself first before you can really open yourself yes. up to being. A, a, realize that you have those. Mm-hmm capabilities and the the bad and the ugly need to be very l- you need to be able to show them mm-hmm. like it's gonna happen and so, uh, i've gotten uh, uh, like emily seen my ugly side mm-hmm. there's no fucking doubt about Been that together for five years there's no way you're not you know what i'm saying i've seen her ugly side it's just but you there's something about it that you love mm-hmm. you know which is the i like, understand but it's not that it's the good outweighs the bad and the ugly mm-hmm hmm you understand what I'm saying? But you, but that, that come. We work together. That chemistry is way mm. worse than just saying "fuck it." 
I'm gonna go fucking start a new relationship and ask people what their favorite color is and what. Their <laughs> <favorite>. <laughs> If I gotta do this shit one more fucking time, bro, I swear to God, I don't even ask favorite colors no more, bro. Like, what's your favorite color? What you like to eat? What kind of music you like? What kind of music? You <laughs> the the, ba- saying, the basics and stuff like that. What are your favorite movies? Mm-hmm. Man, hilarious. So, and I think it's with so damn funny. I think with that um, tying that back into how people are in the so- social or societal sense or sense. Um, do you think that uh, most people only see the good sides of themselves, or for the? I wouldn't no, even say. I wouldn't I don't even say think most it's people. The see, it's the they ignore and push off the bad and ugly shit. I think that's a lot mm. that what happens, or like if they um, give a persona on which that they uh, are in touch with their bad and ugly side and in all actuality they really don't fucking know mm. like i'll tell you straight up bro i get really fucking uh angry like a uh, fucking switch bro like i have yeah the, the light switch rage, yeah, bro. yeah like my rage can be flipped really fucking quick mm-hmm. that's a fucking i've tried to work on that ever since like me and emily like emily says that you need to work on that i've tried mm-hmm. it's more of a fuse now more than it was just so up and down switch. Hey, that's a sign right? of a, hey, that's a sign of a good woman though. When you when she tells you, hey, look, you need this is what you're doing went wrong. Well, someone who's will, a woman who anybody who's willing to tell you when you're fucking and up. willing to work with you. You know what I'm saying? That. Boy, mm-hmm. I tell you, man. It's real life. Bro. Hey, re- relationship example right here, my man. Like even like y'all's wedding, bro. I just felt like that was such a good wedding, bro. That was a fucking. <laughs> that was such a good wedding, wedding bro. bro. Like what? Like that was a tremendous. I mean, wedding. like just getting able, being able to see. Just, Everybody, you know, like being able to just be in everybody community. meshed real well, you know, both sides. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it was the biggest thing, especially like, yeah, it was just a, just a time, you know what I mean? Like, I got think it was a really good fucking time. Man. I think when I there's, always think about it, you know, because you know, people have like the lit weddings or like, uh, you know, like over the top, like exuberant wedding you know what yeah, i'm saying it wasn't that. and it's not that it's just it was a little barn house a little barn house in the outside, country the cigars you know those cigars were a big hit they were hidden they were hidden too cigars were such a j- big hit yeah. but we got chewy thought, thought i stole your ladder and shit man <laughs> <laughs> he like yeah, you literally took me i stole that shit back when i went back over there bro i couldn't believe it was yeah. those <laughs> was, like oh, honestly bro i blamed you like motherfucker i was like because you've stolen lighters from my house I before know. bro don't, don't I, do that, i'll be pocketing lighters that's because you pocket the shit out my lighters that's because, back in the fucking old house bro but that's because if i I hate setting lighters down because <laughs> if I set it down, I know I'm going to lose it. In my head, if I set it down, I'm going to lose it. So I put it in my pocket so I know where it is. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is, though, bro, is that, like, I see a lighter. I'm like, oh, shit. Is that my lighter? Type shit, you know? <laughs> That's what I've done before. But those like, were the torches. Those, is that my fucking lighter? Those were the actual torches, the actual, like, cigar torches. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, Caleb, definitely take that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you need that hoe. <laughs> okay, looking at it like. Nice light, nice torch right here. <laughs> I was so pissed, bro. No, I was some little, some little badass so little kids. Mad. <laughs> so mad, but no, nah, bro. Like that's what I'm saying, though. It wasn't a fucking hundred thousand dollar six figure wedding, bro. You know, it was a nice little wedding, mm-hmm. a nice uh, a little barn house. And it's, had some chewies. And it's cool when beer. when your friends and when I wouldn't say we necessarily have the same friend groups, but our friend groups have the ability have to the, yeah. To be able to mesh together. That's what I'm saying. Well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what I... Uh, that's... Yeah. I mean, it just... Yeah, it was a good time. You know? It was a real good time. And man. I think... I like, always think about it, man. Mm-hmm. Like, we threw... Like, I always tell you, you know, like, we threw a bomb-ass wedding. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, other than just, like... Especially at our age, too. You know what I mean? Because I think, uh, in a sense, like, I, I... My idea of what marriage and stuff like that... Because my parents didn't get married to, like... Fuck. I think, like, 20... I think my mom was like 23, 24, something like that, my mm-hmm. age. And my dad was like maybe 28, 29, something like that. Uh-huh. Or maybe even 26. I might be off. But um, even with that, I'm like, damn, like, especially like at our age, you know. I say our age, but it's like I still feel like a fucking kid, bro. You know what I mean? You know, you know, like in the sense of like how 
how big and vast the world is and how much of the world like, I don't know. A lot of people are like, you're so young. Like, are you sure you're making the right decision? It sure fucking feels like the right decision right now, man. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't fucking work out, great. I'm sure I'll still have enough years Down. to be able to make something fucking happen. Or maybe I'm just like, fuck it. I won't get married anymore. And like, it's real life shit. Like, people, like, they get mad at me when I say that. They're like, oh, you, do hmm. you not believe that your, wedding or your marriage will work? No, I do think. I think it's gonna work. I just, I just. It didn't. feels like the fucking right decision right now. I can't say whether or not, bro. One day, God forbid. I'm not saying she's a fucking cheating whore or anything like that. But maybe one day she gets the wild hair up her ass and she's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go see someone else." Mm -hmm. I don't have any control over that. I think I don't have control of a person. I think that comes with the acknowledgement that um, that life just happens. You know what I mean? That sometimes yeah. shit just happens, mm -hmm. you know. And I think a lot of times we try to. I say we. I, I, I've done this a lot. My uh, trash can. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. Trash, trash can. I was like, damn, there's no easy answer. No, nah, um, I think a lot of times people try to get ahead of situations in order to be the safest possible, you know. But also the part of this like life just happens. Like even with my yeah. parents, even with my parents. Like, do you think my dad married my mom thinking they're going to get divorced do 20 you years your later? Mom married your dad? Thinking they're going to get divorced 20 years later? You know yeah. what I mean? Um and so Shit it just happens, bro. People life, change. Life just happens and it's just like knowing how to deal with those little increments. Increments and I'll say um uh, nuances. Nuances, but uh what's the word? I'm even looking for inconveniences. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. You know what I'm saying? Like um and imagine I was like even like having gone through my own relationship issues having I was like imagine ha having relationship issues when you got a job and got kids <laughs> <laughs> and you in the in the mortgage in the mortgage due in the mortgage due <laughs> and, 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 and the you, fucking electricity bills a little late you, bro you feel me yeah, imagine having relationship issues then bro and you fucking your job's on your your dad your man job ain't on your ass bro job ain't paying like it was oh, that, my, my, yeah. oh, my dad my dad is truck we, we drove trucks his truck broke down you know what i'm saying you know stuff like or your that. Your fucking kid is a, like, slipping up in school, or slipping up, up in school, school, or your kids are sick, or something like that. Shh. And y'all have relationship issues on top of that. You know what I mean? So, and I, it, 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 like, after being in a relationship, it just like, damn, like, obviously there was a time after the relationship of like the man, you know, like the just the hurt, the the hurt part of it, you no, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when um, I told you that's when a lot of that. Um, that was our last podcast when um, all that manosphere red pill shit started flooding my timeline and shit, bro. <laughs> And it was like I could see why they have a why so many people or so many guys nowadays gravitate towards a message like this because it's almost empowering, you know what I mean, and almost enabling. It's enable. It's, oh, it, it, yeah. it's enabling as oh, fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so um, I understood why, but then I also saw the side of like life works in many other different ways. You know what I mean? And it's like for me personally, especially within my relationships or just my interactions with the opposite sex with women, with women. It, between last year and this year, bro, it's like night and fucking day. You know what I mean? Did you see them as just strictly uh, relationship type shit? Not directly like just that you want to have sex with them. Just you I, understand I, what I'm saying? I think that for a while and coming up. I wanted a relationship because I saw how where hookup culture was going. And this is before I even like started even like just going around, you know, doing my thing, right? And so at that point, I wanted a. I knew I wanted something that would last long term. I think that in my own head, because a lot of the, a lot of the shit that you think is the wrong is just in your fucking head. Uh, honestly, a lot of the shit you think is wrong or think is not working is just in your fucking oh, yeah, head. Yeah. It's in your head, dog. Overthinking. You know what I'm saying? And so I think with where society was heading and getting in the new social media and like getting into college, hookup culture, and knowing like I don't know this this is for me. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't necessarily seem fulfilling. You know? I and I, was just, I felt the same way. You know? And it's like, but. It's almost like if you don't join in, you're just a dud, you know? Or a weirdo. A weirdo. It's like, well, what's wrong with you? It's like, well, it's like nothing. Or prude. Prude or fucking... Motherfuckers call you gay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Women call you gay. That's... Just, but nah, I, or call you fruity or zesty. I would say that uh, every <laughs> now... I got it... I would say... I, got, I would say women are quicker to call you gay. 
if they think you're oh fruity or something like God, that. Yes, um, there, I would say every now and then there's a there, a, a, a stupid ass motherfucker with be like, oh, what bro, you what's, what's wrong? What you want? Like it's like right on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even then that blend, when I was talking about how like I really didn't do all that. Um, there was guys who were like, damn man, like for real, like. There were some guys like man, like some guys were like you're a vir- you're a virgin at eighteen. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, it like that's weird. And it's like, I mean, like it's definitely. I mean, I'm not saying it's not. I'm mm. not saying it's weird, but like for society standards now, mm. it's rare. Well, at minimum, it's rare. Well, I had got then their guys were like, damn, like I, I, I couldn't imagine. You know what I mean? Like just like everybody gets thrown out there, man. You know. And then there's other guys who were like, honestly, bro, like save that shit, bro. Like honestly, like like. For, for real, like do that shit on your own time, you know. And I was honest. That's good. That's rare. That was respectful. cool as fuck. You and know awesome, what I mean? Yeah. Of having like having friends who obviously do what they do. You know what I mean? But also, see, it's like, man, honestly, it ain't even all that. You know what I mean? And it's like it, you just because now, like in their heads, they're like, man, I just all he see, like, he sees a girl. He's his first mind goes to just. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and it's like what her ass and tits look like. Exactly, you know. He told me that and he was like, I, I mean, like, I wish I was. You know, some people, like, I wish I was still where that is because, like, the world, you see the world so differently. You know what I mean? And you don't realize once you, boy, once you taste that sweetness, son. Nectar. Boy, the world open when you become a man. That's really becoming a man. I say becoming a man, but becoming a man is a process. That's part of it, I would say. Paying your bills, is Pay, one. paying your bills, paying rent, paying uh, rent, just really just becoming self sufficient. But I would say, um, I would say when you cross that threshold of like of sleeping with with sleeping with someone, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. Yeah. The world just becomes so different to you. You know what I mean. It's like a thing it, it, you really can't explain it in a way. You know, mm-hmm. you can only describe it. You know, but you can't necessarily explain it. Mm-hmm. I think that's why some. That's why our parents told us, you know, wait till you're married. You know, wait till you're married. Wait, wait, just wait. Have listened, just, you just, like, just, you know, what I'm saying. And um, I think, and it goes back to it with um, societal pressures. But you can't, you can't blame society for it because again, you have agency. You have, we all have agency to do, you know, or we all have our own autonomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all can make our own decisions, but I do think that a lot of times that a lot of people get pressured into doing stuff that they normally wouldn't do to appease others in the eyes of themselves. You know what I mean? If that makes more sense. Yeah. So I don't know where the fuck I was going with this shit, but I think overall, just how to like overall, cause, um, I think with the podcast, I, I want to help people, you know what I mean? And be better. I want to help people be better. I can't slowly necessarily but surely because man, I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna be in f- f- five years, much less like when I'm forty or some shit. But like I'm definitely not the same person I was mm-hmm. f- even like f- four years ago, bro. I'm not the same person that I was when I graduated high school. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not That's I, for sure. I think there's I- instances in which I am the same person in small ways. You oh know yeah, what I, mean? I mean like personality traits. Like I'm still. Mm. Fucking loud. I still crack jokes. I still cuss a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, just. I'm definitely more confident in myself than I am. I'm mm. not a. Uh, what's the goddamn word I used to always use, bro? Uh, insecure. Mm-hmm. I used to be so insecure in high school, bro. Now, where did that? Uh, Good God. Where did that confidence come from for you? Where did it come from? I think in a lot of ways, I just stopped giving a shit what people thought about me. Mm-hmm. That was. Oh my god, bro! If you didn't like me in high school, I was such a fucking. I would do the whole cock and Amy story, like, mm. oh, I don't give a fuck, man. I don't give a fuck if people don't like me, man. Mm. Oh, that was such bullshit. I was such mm. a fucking pussy. <laughs> such a pussy. Now, now it's like I care about like what my friends think of me, what mm. Emily thinks of me, which is more mom. important anyway. Exactly. Like, who is the most important to me? Mm. What are their thoughts mm. of me? Um. That's where the confidence came in from. And honestly, in a way, being able to do shit. Um, and it, she still helps me from time to time if I need it. But, like, just not being able to need, like, my, my parents' full support all the time. Mm. I think that's one thing where it came from as well. And that's that's where I'm getting through now. So I have to pay bills and, you know, do everything on my own. You know what I mean? And 
the parent our parents want to support us. That's the thing, you know. Yes. I think I like, another that. another thing that gets thrown around in society. Well, your parents still helping you and shit like that. It's like, bro. Yes. If you have and pa- they fu- or they should, they don't have to. Yeah, but if you have like, if you have parents who are willing to help you, bro. You are blessed. Beyond blessed, bro. bro. what? I mean, some people, don't, like, even Mother's Day, bro, some people can't even celebrate Mother's Day. Bro, you got a mom to celebrate, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. So I think it's just kind of a, in a sense, I think it's more of a just being grateful in who you are. You know what I mean? For what? Oh, uh, with the confidence. Okay. Building that confidence, you know what I mean? Um, I think that 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 small inkling of confidence in yourself plays a big factor into how you interact with the world too as well right you know what i mean and so uh especially for me like i said the disparity it's been night and day for me and same thing like i showed you patrice o'neill and stuff like that right and it's like the same thing he said it's like does it take a thousand sit-ups to get better no does it take does it, be, does it help yes does it take get have a million dollars does it help yes does it take it no but it's just a a right it's like a it's a self-assured confidence and a righteousness almost and you're in yourself but it's got to be it's got to be instilled in something that's real you know what i'm saying or not even that it's just a belief that you can um really attest to mm-hmm. that you can really as stupid as it sounds as you can really believe in like the biggest thing for me is where it comes from confidence is just trying to be the best or the most best man that I can be because I can't be nobody's perfect. I know mm. I'm not perfect, but if I, I, I can at least try to be the best that I can be, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, if you do, that's another thing. If you do your best, you know what I mean? I mean, if you can say to yourself, you did the best that you could possibly do. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like when I was at my blend store, blend stories, the tryout I went to at blend when I was like, I thought I wasted a fucking day. You know what I mean? I thought I wasted forty dollars in a trip to Brenham, and then I look at it like, hey, we like you. It's like what? <laughs> it's like, Jeez. and it's like really? It's like out of it's like they saw me out of all pe- out, of, out of all the people. You mm-hmm. know? But it's like damn, I really did go out there and do my best. You know what I mean? And I think the part of it is that sometimes you will get told no after doing your best in oh, this yeah. world. I think that's the part. I think that's the rejection. Being able to take rejection is a big fucking part of it. Man, and that comes with again. That goes back to I say how to deal with women because that's what all gets thrown around. But it's everything. How you how you take rejection at a job. How you take even when I'm when I'm selling stuff at work. You know what I mean? Like and people don't necessarily sales, mm-hmm. sales and stuff like that, bro. Sales you will get shot down in the most egregious ways. I've shot, I've shot people down in the most egregious way for sales because sometimes, like, especially, like, door-to-door sales, bro, like, get the fuck off my point, bro. Like, I don't want to be bothered with this shit right now, you know? Every no is closer to a yes. That's what I'm saying, you know? Yep. And I think, like, you keep – I think people have such a hard time hearing the word no, too, as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of, like, like, well, no, you can't do that. It's like, like, like the promotion shit at Walmart that I'd be telling you about. Every time that I get a no, I'm like, okay, my yes is – coming closer mm-hmm. you understand what i'm saying slowly but surely you gotta go you gotta go through life with that bro every no that you get okay uh, my yes is coming closer my yes is right there do you think your yes is somewhere it could be somewhere else too i had to move to another store yeah yeah i had to move to another store hmm. to get uh yeah same thing opportunity. remember I, um, that, that day i quit target and i was well, i was happy in the motherfuckers <laughs> that's another thing you know though, bro. yeah like you know what I mean? mm, and getting that energy off of you. I even talked to my mom about that too, because my mom was like, "I was I was upset because you didn't have a, a job already lined up before you quit." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But when you told me that, and I think that's one thing with like with parents that like just being able they just to want the best for you, bro. They do want the best, you know. And but it's in ways in which you know, you don't necessarily want for yourself. Mm-hmm. They just they just know how the world works through their eyes mm-hmm. and want you to be as safe as possible you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you can't fault parents for that right Mm -hmm. i think sometimes the 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 child resentment comes from um i think it's uh there was a part in a rap song i'm gonna introduce you to um i showed you doesn't you a song by brother ali probably brother brother, you sent me a few songs yeah but brother ali it was a part that in a song he said um he's like mom loves you but it doesn't like Mom loved me, but like it's hard to feel it because it's like because the lenses which she sees life through doesn't work for me. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, I felt that. You know? Like, I felt that to my core. Come from a different place, bro. You know? And I was like, it's not that my mom don't love me. You know what I mean? It's just that I know, I, I, I the only way I'm going to see the world is through my eyes. You know what I mean? And I just have to learn. Sometimes the hard way. Someone's You got to learn <laughs> someone else's point yeah. of view. Like, bro, it's like, so this one time on this podcast, um, uh, I can't remember who exactly it was, but they essentially said that like their dad was very verbally and physically abusive. But at one point, like he had to forgive him because he realized that his father thought that he was doing a better job just because he was present in their life because his fa his father's father mm -hmm. wasn't there at all. So he feels like he was already doing a better job than what mm -hmm. his original dad was doing. Am I making sense? My dad, I had a, I had a conversation with my dad before too. My dad actually asked him asked me to rate him as a parent. What did you say? Rate him as rate a rate him as a parent. I was like, hmm. Were you honest with him? I said honestly, uh, a nine. Were you honest with him? Uh, a solid nine because what does he need to work on? I can't say any parents a ten. Fuck no. Um, because again, no one's perfect. Yeah. But um I'll say like dad, from someone who didn't have a dad in their life, and the fact that you're in all of our lives, yeah. You're easily you weren't, was you're he, easily you weren't abusive. You know? Easily attended. Weren't abusive. I mean there were way there were things he had to work on, obviously, because, I mean like not ha I mean not having a dad and then one dad he had, you know, was, or his stepsister's no, dad. No, no, you know. Right. So like, you know, but like um you know, I was like, I was like, Dad, honestly, from someone who didn't have an example of what it is to be a dad, you're easily a ten. Yeah. You know, like I had no experience. You know, like you know, no guidance. And from like, and it's not your fault. You just had to find your way, your niche. You know, your niche yourself. You know what I mean? And you know, even then, he says, you know, like he loves, he loves having us. You know, he's like having children was probably the best thing I ever could have done in my life. You know. That's what's up. That's good, man. You know, and like, um, even as my, even my mom, you know, like I'd say both my parents are nice, you know, because like, how often do you get parents that are both in your life? First of all, mm -hmm. made it work for however long they try to make it work for, for the betterment of us. You know what I mean? And you know, you you see the you see the sacrifice they gave, mm -hmm. you know, for for us as kids, you know, and especially going through a relationship and learning that, you know. It it helped me look at my parents and like, damn, you know, like I'm not fucking perfect, you know. I was a little shithead, you know. It was sometimes That's I get, how I feel. you I know, was fucking terrible as it, a kid. You know, it's like, damn, like I was like, so how was like, and then your parents still love you after all the bull fucked up shit you done did. You know what the I'm saying? Job you put them through, bro. Bro, what? All the shit you did had your parents fucking, bro. Like had your parents stressing. <laughs> Because <laughs> they just want their kids to do good, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, and I think that it, start, it does start at home a lot, you know what I mean? It starts at home. But I think you can create home where you are, you know? I think that a lot of people, in a sense of a home, because I have to go back to social media, social media does um, isolate us, in a sense, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. More people feel connected online. But in real life, you see, like, it's even I'm walking down the street, bro. I'm, like, looking at people. Like, people always head straight or head down, like, not looking or something. That's the fucking biggest pain in the ass. It's like, a pain. Bro, like, pick your goddamn head up. And not for, like, uh, saying hello, how are you doing, good morning. Mm -hmm. I should still blows my mind that Texas people do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just... Keep your head on a fucking swivel, dog. You don't know what the fuck is out here. Exactly. Nowadays, that, bro. too. Like, I, you know like, saying? That's the biggest part to me. Like, this one guy was walking outside with an umbrella. He had an umbrella on it uh, in, in, in Texas in the summertime. Had an umbrella. And he had there his head no down. fucking rain. Had his head down. There was no rain this summer, too, bro. He's bullshitting. And, like, I think there's a maybe sun or something like that. I don't know. But, um, I mean, not and, like, whatever he has, you know, not making, not making fun of the dude, but... I'm walking and like he had his head down. He didn't see me until I'm like two feet in front of him. Jesus Christ! I'm like, I'm like, excuse me, bro. He's like, oh, bro. I was like, I'm like, Are you good, brother? Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you I know, know exactly what it is. I'm like, everything all right? You know what I mean? Like, it's just 
But even then, like going back to it, of I like acknowledging people on the sidewalk. Yeah, I like I like just those small, like smi- smiling smile and nod. How you doing? You know what I mean? Still crazy. That hey. shit does not happen in Florida whatsoever. Oh no, hell no. <laughs> like what? I was telling somebody about that. Like New York, Florida. Like you look at like Texas. You know, you look at somebody. It's either you know. I started doing this a lot What's more. Up? How you doing? I started doing this a lot more too, especially when I see other black dudes too. Instead of like you know like the. You know, like the that. Just, just go back. Uh, whatever happens to the chin up, bro? Like, just like, nod, yeah. especially if someone you don't you don't know, bro. Just like a thing of just like just kind of builds that res- just a basic level of respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what's up? Just like a cool, just, what's up? Right. You know, yep. just a simple gesture. I mean, of course, with the white dudes, you know, <laughs> you doing all right, sir. Do you doing all right, sir? Yeah, yeah. How you doing? But but let's see. I see. I see another brother. Uh, it's like, oh, what's good, bro? And it's like a. Uh, Cause I, I was like, especially as black people, I'm like, bro, we're we're, t- they already want us to be against each other. I don't know who the fuck they is, but they want us to be against each other. You know what I'm saying? So there's no point in keeping that up. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, all we're gonna have, especially with like friends, I mean, even with people, all we're gonna have is each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In the community around us. Yeah. Like remember the days of being able to leave your kid with your neighbor because some shit happened. Could you do that shit now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and not even that. It's like, I th- I think people still are willing to do that. Maybe it's because we're still in Texas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, but I still think people are willing to be that. You know, of like, uh, you know, definitely some southern shit. So definitely some southern shit. But um, how can we like? Now I'm not saying that this is the right way or this is the, you know, this is what everybody should be doing. But it's what works. You know what I mean? It's what works for a functional society. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I think that going back to that, I think we have a not that our society isn't functional, but I think that everyone's so focused on themselves, you know, which isn't a bad thing because at the end of the day, all you're going to have is you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, But I think that like being able to give unto others in small ways of just a simple acknowledgement of someone or saying, Hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like a, even a smile, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's like no, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Cause I think just as a society, everybody just always like this at each other. Groups. You know what I mean? Like, and no one can really ever sit down and we can have conversations, but every conversation has got an opinion, you know, and you have to have an opinion on something. You know, or take, yeah, yeah. You have to have some kind of take on something. If you don't have an opinion on it, then you're like, well, well no, no. How, how do you feel about it? You know, it's like, well, well you should have an opinion on that. What if I just don't? What give if, a fuck? Exactly. What, what if, if I, I just don't give a fuck? What if I just don't care? It doesn't have anything to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. What would you think would for the overall perspective of society? What, what do you it be? Yeah, what would you think it would be? Mind the best? your fucking business. <laughs> Mind your goddamn fucking business and but keep al- pushing forward. But also be a respectful person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. Do you think basic respect is lost in society? Depends on the person, but depends on the person. Yeah. In a sense. It just depends. Like if you're fucking living on TikTok and social media and shit like that. Mm-hmm. For sure. Like I hate the excuse me. I hate the YouTube pranksters and shit like that. Who oh, like <laughs> bother people all goddamn day. I saw that one kid got shot. <laughs> And and I'm not saying the dude was wrong for not shooting him, but that's what you fucking get when you don't leave people the fuck alone. Yeah, the you follow- play stupid games, you win stupid fucking prizes. And I'm not saying the dude was correct in pulling out the gun. He really wasn't. Um, but you but follow someone around for 30 seconds. Dog. And you keep, and they tell you leave them the fuck alone. 30 seconds is a long time. Like, so to so follow somebody around, especially a store, mm-hmm. like directly, especially they told you to leave them alone. Some people act in different ways. Fucking the fuck around to find out. Yep. But going back to attention is a hell of a drug. Clout is a hell of a drug. That's what I'm saying. The biggest thing is, though, man, whatever you learn from this podcast, one thing you should know is mind your fucking business and move forward. That's what I liked about New York. Be better. That's why I like everybody to mind their mind fucking their business. fucking business, bro. They don't know shit about shit. I don't know, man. Uh, keep it moving. <laughs> I don't know. Keep it moving. What? This dude got, got shot? What? Damn, I ain't see it. I ain't see it. I ain't see it. <laughs> Forward line. Get the fuck out. I, to a degree, I can see. Hmm. Hmm. That's just a thing of ideologies. Because on one hand, it's like, focus on yourself. Because that's all you're ever going to have. But then, like, you see the people around you and building a sense of community. I guess, is there, like, a, any kind of... Um, I got you. 
Yeah, as a married man, when your wife calling, you got to answer that phone. Yeah. Hey, hey, ain't no, hey, there's nah. two phone calls you got to take. The one from your wife and no, the one from, from your, your mama. Mother. Yeah, but th- thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Call your mom. Hey, matter of fact, call your mama if you ain't called her today, bro. Honestly. Call your grandma, too, bro, if you haven't talked to her in a minute. Yeah. If I you... try to call mine at least once a month. Oh, your sister went to school, didn't she? Yeah, bro. SFA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was yeah, just like, yeah, I should yeah. like it. Right. Man, I'm really proud of her, bro. Because mm-hmm. one thing, I, if she sees this, you know it's true, bitch. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> but she really had a tough time, like, keeping, like, making friends mm-hmm. and whatnot. And, bro, she has, like, a whole group of friends that she, like, hangs out with and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm super proud of her, man. Like, she tells me about it and that she has a good time. And she, now she's, uh, like, in a, you know, like, the play and shit like that, like, theater mm-hmm. and whatnot. She's, like, assistant. To the stage manager. Really? Like, Damn. She went up she went up to like the person who runs the whole program, like the professor or whatever, and was like, Hey, like I just wanna see if y'all needed some help with the new play that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Hold on the professor was like, Hold on a second, wait a second. Call the stage manager over and be like, Hey, this right here is your new assistant. Tell her what you need to do. That's it, that's it. Damn, bro. All she, and all she did. Was just go, go up there, and ask, just mm-hmm. like go just up and talk ask. to her. Like, hey, hey, I'm uh, I'm fucking in a uh, freshman. Um, in uh, my uh, major is theater arts or whatever it was. I can't fucking remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to know if you needed any help. Hmm. Not even a paragraph, a couple sentences. I was about to say, I, as a because as an older brother, as older brothers, having to send our sister to school was uh, feels a little different sometimes. Would you say? <laughs> I, the thing I, I, with her though is, bro, she won't. She gonna. She'll come back for like uh, holidays and whatnot, bro. Mm. But she's not gonna come through for anything else. Really, she's not gonna come on a weekend though. She uh, don't like driving and shit like that. That's what killed me. Like leaving her, I was like, damn. Like I'm really not gonna see your ass mm-hmm. until Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. That's what killed me the most, bro. I think my mom said my sister's coming back and she bringing like five friends with her. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> That's insane. Five friends. That's what I'm saying. In like, the house. That's what I'm saying, bro. I was like, Mama, you and me. Yeah, right. Mama, you. Ch- Damn, Mom. She said, We got the blood mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my mom would have been like, I don't know about that one. You she, know what I'm saying? Look, Shit, that's a lot of fucking women. That's a lot of. House. That's a lot. Uh, but I remember, I remember ha- her having sleepovers. I mean, ain't nothing I mean used to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I would say, like, uh, when I sent my sister off to school, so one of the things was like, Okay, look, just be smart, okay? <laughs> I told her, and I was like, Listen, like, <laughs> I trust you. Like you're a much better student than I was. Mm-hmm. But I was like, if anybody fucks around, tries to tell you something, you hopping shit, in that suburban so fast. <laughs> that. But I was like, listen, you used to fucking beat up on your sister, mm-hmm. and you used to try to fight me all the time. You better show them that same damn fucking energy. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? You know. I was like, you wanted to whoop up on my ass and your sister's ass. Mm-hmm. You better keep that same fucking energy with those motherfuckers. Yeah, especially straight you. up. Man, what? Cause my sister goes. Uh, my sister's at Louisiana LSU. Oh no shit! Mm-hmm. That's good for her, man. Yeah, no, we're talking about actually going to the uh, LSU Florida game on the 11th of November. Boy, LSU might lose that one, bro. I ain't gonna lie, but I'm gonna be in those. Your, isn't your uh, pops a Gators fan too? Oh no, he's a. I won't say necessarily. Like, he likes watching the Gators. Um, I won't say he's a fan. I thought being from Jacksonville, he would, because that's like right there from Gainesville. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So it's I'll, right there. I, I remember he said. Uh, he was telling me. Um, actually, they were talking about. Um, he was talking about actually before he went to go play college, uh, leaving high school. He said there was a group of three or four guys with him. Uh, they all had a plan to go walk on at either Florida or Florida State, and um, he said we're gonna meet together. You know, train after school, everything. Right after a while, my dad was the only one out of all of them who kept training, and even they, they even told him they were like, "Hey, Reggie, how that make him feel? That make him sad." Not sad, but he realized he realized that like he was the only one willing to put in the effort. You know what I mean? Because for him, it was more of like a, he got to get out of, he got to get out of Duval. You know what I mean? Right on. Do whatever it takes right to get out of Duval in that other situation. Mm-hmm. You know? And if football is that that thing, then it's like fuck it. It's the biggest fucking thing over there. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, but no, he even said like, no, like the guys even acknowledged like, no, Reggie, you're the only one that's really sticking with this, man. I think we're all done with it. You know? That's a sad fucking reality. It's a sad reality. You gotta fucking move on. And that's part of being a homies, bro. That's part of being a man too. Honestly, um, being, is being able to know when you need to leave. Knowing when you need to leave, but then knowing when, when you have to make those decisions. Even when I was training for to go to blend, like there were times I like I want to stay up and fucking play and fucking smoke and shit, right? 
But I know I gotta go work out at six in the morning. Yep. You know, I know I gotta be up. I gotta be up at five o'clock to go work out at six in the morning because mm-hmm. I'm already not that I'm like trying to aspire. I'm going to blend. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to go play. Like there's this isn't like a thing of like uh you know I'm dissing anybody or anything like that. But your boy got goals. You know. Let me uh, can I talk to you about? So you played games. In Spring blue. game. Spring game. Spring game. Yes. Spring game and scrimmages. And scrimmages. Mm-hmm. Did you play like inner, like blue and white type of fucking scrimmages? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what was like the main, not scheme, but like what was the main like formation that y'all would play a lot of the times as a defense? Defense four two five. Four two five. Mm-hmm. Coach liked running a. Uh, our DB coach actually said the first time, he was such a good DB coach. Shout out Coach Drew Coleman. Um, that's you, the one you emailed, right, to get uh, invited to the tryout? Mm-mm. No? Um, Who was the one that you emailed? Because I remember being you, being there for you whenever you were sending out the emails and shit. Um, he had a um, – at crazy. first it was the – I just saw the flyer on Twitter. Okay. I was, uh, I was like, blend tryout, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, there's one in February and there's one in May. I was like, all right, I'm going for the one in May. Okay. And so um, – after that, he texted me. He was like, "Hey, Coach Jones from Blinn, uh, defense coordinator. Seen that you're interested. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We just uh, we said we liked uh, your tryout. Um, we don't have spots on the actual team since it's about to be summertime. We're getting recruits coming in. Yeah. But he said we want you for our redshirt program. So essentially, the redshirt program was a you come in. It was I think 50 guys who got were, the tryout. It, got, the tri- got the tryout, but essentially it's like a year long tryout." If that makes sense. And see where you go. Mm-hmm. So, that first day we're in there, and um, this was Hurricane Harvey time too. So well, the first oh, wow, week, okay. yeah, the first yeah. the first week was just straight rain and floods. Mud. So like, bro, we didn't do Love shit. Playing in mud. We we didn't go to Love fucking no. We didn't go to class or anything or practice oh, that, really? for that first week. Okay. Yeah, um, because everything was just flooded, and so um. Did you play after that, all that shit? Was the fucking grass so fucked up? So the first thing the coaches told us when we were in the retro program, he said. <laughs> You are not affiliated with Blend Football, okay? <laughs> off rip? Yeah, off rip. Okay, look, don't th- don't say you're on the team because you're not on the team. <laughs> All right? I was like, okay, okay. We'll, 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 we'll dead in the mud right now. And he said, essentially, y'all going to work out once every morning. And then after that, he said, we'll evaluate. He said, I think four days a week we'll work out. And then the fifth day we do like seven on seven and stuff like that to evaluate actual on-field play, stuff like that. And so – um even then, the seven on seven was like a big ass, like eleven on eleven, just everybody running full speed, playing football and shit. And there was another dude named, um, especially in the pro- in the program, um, his name's Keandre, and um, he actually got an offer from North Texas, didn't have the grades. I don't know why he wasn't on the team, but he was in the retro program because mm-hmm. the motherfucker was good. All right, um, but as soon as I saw him, yeah, like, it was one of those things. Like as soon as we saw each other, what did he play? He played uh, same corner and receiver. Okay. And we're both like five eight five nine, about one forty one fifty. Mm-hmm. But this motherfucker was fast. Okay, like Tyreek Hill type dog, shit. my dog. I mean, he had that. Hey, that's the the thing about it. I was like more like brute strength. Yes, stronger. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker was explosive. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but as soon as we saw each other, like. It's one of those things of like, okay, yep, I'm guarding you, you guard me, like, and it's like, good, you know, like good, like good on good, like yeah. I know you're the best one out here, I'm the, I'm the best one out here. It's like, okay, Let's we we already knew, like, it's gonna Iron be a, we about to dog fight this whole this whole time. So shout out to Keandre and my roommate Aston. He was a hella good receiver. He tore his ACL during a uh, fucking um, spring ball. Yeah. Stuff, bro. Yeah, bro, that was that, that was sucked. I mean, like, and he was do he was good too. Six he was six three and just had really good hands and yeah, right could ru- you know those guys that aren't fast but can just run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the type shit. You know what I mean? The long ass stride. Exactly, bro. exactly. It's like he can you fucking, fucking run. hate that shit, bro. Because you can't you do try shit. so hard to be fast, bro. And here goes this motherfucker. That motherfucker just with three of your legs, bro. Just striding away, bro. Just getting away from you. Love it. Um, but yeah, so we work out every morning and then um. After pra- after the practices, the coaches he told us, go introduce yourself to the coaches and make yourself known. Tell them you're in the retro program, you know, because a lot of them they got they got their other they got everything else to do. They you know what I'm saying? Positional groups and whatnot. Exactly. And so, um, but after a while, like that first week, bro, you see like 30, 20 guys drop off because like guys stop coming to practice after like that first two not three weeks. It, not you know, to win it. Um, stop going to class, start fucking up with grades and stuff like that, and then start like you'll see them come back. Every now and then, so you have to pay for school. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Some guys got scholarships. Um, that's one thing about Blinn is that scholarships are scholarships and grants aren't hard to come by at Blinn. Yeah. Unless you like my, unless you like us and your mom make too much money. So. Um, mm-hmm. That's when you use. That's when you use your dad's fast So, <laughs> right so, so, um, but yeah. After that, um, and then guys would get smoking and they get so caught. So with the four two five, what did you play? Box safety. Corner. I was still. A corner. Oh, you were still corner. Yeah, okay. still a corner. Okay. Um, what I would like playing free because I like the way they had the free safety. Just playing center field and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, at corner. Um, I would say that. Competition was stiff as fuck. Um, In your position, dog. Or? Oh, my position. Yeah. Competition was so stiff, bro. Even because the coach told us he was like, "I I play five DBs at a time. I had six go D one last year." Mm-hmm. It's like to do the math. You know what I mean? I play five DB. I start five DBs. Six left. And I had six go D one. You know what I'm saying? He said, "You get you touch this field, you're gonna get seen." You know what I mean? Um, and so. There was one guy, Ricky Thomas. He ended up going to Kansas. Another dude named Mike Garrett. He went to uh, Tulsa, I believe. Um, another, there's a couple other dudes who were just like one dude named Nick. Um, hella good safety. I don't know why he didn't go nowhere. Um, but you, you, you saw a lot of that too, um, with guys just falling by the wayside for for some bullshit, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just because of the new recruits or uh, just don't get seen, you know what I mean? And these guys, you're like, bro, this dude, this dude need to go play a fucking Bama or some shit, you know what I mean? And it's like, they just don't get that kind of recognition. And it's like, Or the grades and shit like that. Or too. grades. It's always something little, you know what I mean? So whenever you were playing CB, because as a D lineman, it's C ball, get ball, straight up. As a CB, what were... What were some of the coverages that you ran all the time? A lot of zone. A lot of zone. A lot, a lot of man to man. A lot of cover four. Cover. What about like cover eight, cover nine, cover six? Yeah, so yeah, cover four, cover eight, and that cover four concept, same mm-hmm. same thing. Mm-hmm. Never really had a cover nine. We did have cover nine. But we had a lot of different stuff. We ran a lot of like um, cloud package options yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we had this one um, where it was like single receiver on your side. Safety over the top, and you basically like you're basically in a trail technique the whole time with that safety yeah, player yeah. on top, right? Uh-huh. And there were times where, um, oh man, when I was in cover two, I had to fucking chase down a fade, bro, and cover two as a corner. Oh man, because I'm sitting here, I oh, I, I looked at I, I something told me to look at the safety and clap and say, hey, you know what we fucking in, right? And so I fucking pass this man off, and I see he keep fucking running, and the safety's still in the middle of the field. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean, but that's but that and, and then the coaches tell you, don't do that. That's don't not leave. your man. That's not your zone. Don't leave your area or your island. And it's so fucking because I'm always told, don't He's give up the big play. I'm about to say yeah. Don't give up the big easy play. So I'm thinking from like I gotta cover for coaching at a you know like, you know. Yeah. And so I'm thinking from like don't give up the big play. Fuck, make up for this motherfucker's mistake, right? Mm-hmm. But then you're gonna let something else happen down here. You know, anything get they get racked. You know what I'm saying? But I, you got a motherfucker running wide open downfield, butt naked open. You, it's like what else you gonna do, bro? And it's like except just turn around and look at the safety. You just like so. You know, whenever you were in your zone, what were your progression or reads in a sense of? Mm. If you boom ball is snapped, quarterback quarterback is dropping back. If you're single, Three step. if you're one, if you're uh, if your backside, if your backside trips one on one, you're a man. No matter what you, right. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. You're, you're back, you could be in cover three, but you're still you're a man. A man. You know, mm-hmm. um, if you're, let's say, because most like most of those coverages go based off of those doubles packages, so like a yes. two receiver sides, um. A lot of times when you're reading out of like a cover eight or like a cover four when you're playing either a deep quarter or a deep third, you're usually keying in on that second receiver first. Yes. Because um, usually that progression goes second receiver, he pushes up field. And he's waiting for his – his, uh, mm. God damn it. Why? Mm-hmm. He's waiting for the Y to go through his route. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like those progressions. So usually you just carry who goes. You're in that cover four, cover eight, where you got back quarters, back third. You're just running through. You're just 
protecting the back. Yes. Whoever come, just protect deep. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, you're in cover two. Cover two with double to your right side. In front of you. Right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Get a good – knock that first receiver off of his route a little bit. Yep. And eyes on number two. Yep. Number two pushes vertical. You – Drop back. May, you drop back in that zone. Drop back and just stay in that zone because two pushes vertical – you kind of trail him a little bit, but then kind of open that up because there's going to be something coming underneath that. You yes, know what I'm saying? Always. You go, he goes vertical. Well, it's, either, it's a drag. It's either going to be flat, a five. case may be. Exactly. It's either going to be a five-yard in or like a little five-yard hitch. You know what yes. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why you just stay through that progression. Um, and, again, it depends on like the – all depends on what you're running, especially running cover two out of deuce, at a, like a double side. Was it like Tampa two? Type or was it yes, you're yes, more floating as a pre- as a the press that middle linebacker had that m- middle, not, the deep middle, not necessarily deep middle, but he had that like 15 to 20 yard range, right on. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a guy who was playing that a dude named uh, he played at UTSA actually, uh, Trevor Harmonson, yeah. um, fast 6'4, so 6'4, and uh. I would quick. say fast, of, you got to be quick and smart. One of those guys who could run, but there's one of those. Two, Mike. There's one of those plays where throw it over the middle. He just, you know, the, just jumps up high as a kid. Athlete. And just, yeah, you know. Big athlete, yeah, yeah. And so um, he was a really good, too. And he could lay a lick. That was the biggest thing because, yeah, you know, like nowadays with so many scheme coverages, it's hard to, it's, it's rare to see linebackers get this chance to make that lick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and uh, really the days of having those big 260-pound middle line, nasty, snot-breathing middle – Not happening. Little middle linebacker. You can't have that when it's so pass-heavy, especially in the NFL. You know, today. that's why you're prototy- – College is different. You can literally fucking mm-hmm. throw whoever out there, and as long as you can fit the uh, st- their strengths, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. you can let them do whatever the fuck they exactly. need to do. Exactly. What was his name that played um, – what did he play? I think he played safety or uh, – Isaiah Simmons? Yes, mm-hmm. Isaiah Simmons. Clemens. Yes, because um, um, normally it's like a safety like that, six four, but he could fucking run. Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, can he run? And then um, I was like, saying how they misuse him, man. Just what I'm saying, bro. They misuse him so goddamn much. He'd be he a, should be a linebacker, an absolute, or that uh, or a roamer, Joker, uh, jo- yeah, the jo- roamer, that, that, uh, robber, yeah, 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 nickel, or basically nickel, yes. Um, have him play like in the box, but then also a place where he can. Because I don't think he's as good with one on one coverage. No, no. But he should be doing his own shit, running around, either fuck, just fitting where there's space. Mm-hmm. That's where he should be doing. Exactly, and mm-hmm. or even then, you can have him come off the edge because he's a fucking fast motherfucker. Exactly, and he can beat a block. You remember watching Jabril Peppers? And you, yeah, you, you, you were <laughs> yes. so good. He was so good in college. I, I remember you weren't the biggest on him cause going into the league. I liked him tackling. I didn't see him in, in coverage. coverage, though. Mm-hmm. He was a great box. He could have been like Mark Barron, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what the Giants did. They had him in the box almost always. Well, that's because he had almost always. He played them his most snaps at linebacker. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and no, his two most snaps were linebacker and corner. Mm-hmm. It was like, bro, he's a safety. He's a basic safety. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yep. And so uh, nickel corner too. He used to play a, a decent bit of his nickel corner. Was mm-hmm. oh, that slot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but we had a guy like that too. Um, there was a, yeah that nickel position mm-hmm. just like that, like hella athletic. Um, this dude had a little small short arms, and it was Petey. Yeah, it's uh, like the little short arms. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just like jam the fuck out of them little them yeah. little ass uh, slots and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, that was the offense or the defense that blend essentially. Um, I, know. I just wanted to know because like, it's I mean, oh defensive lineman, bro. Like see mm. ball, get ball, mm-hmm. get to the quarterback, get to the halfback, whatever the case may be. Mm. Set uh, set your edge or force. Yeah, that's one thing other. I think people forget about um, corner is how much run scheme we have to know. A lot, bro, especially like, when you're in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, cover two shit. A four, especially four two, a four two five. Like sometimes you are a linebacker mm-hmm. out there, bro. Yep, especially the nickel mm-hmm. or the or the slot corner, bro. And you gotta set a you fucking are a line edge. Bro. You gotta set the fuck You're out of sa- an edge, bro. And unless you're having your safety drop back down into the box, bro, mm-hmm. it's gonna be on you, baby. And there was times where like the running back would like bounce out real quick, and I'm like, oh shit, like I, I gotta stay put. Gotta you get, know, gotta get, gotta get. I'm like, stop, I'm like, stay put, and then he bounced to the other side. I'm like, okay, just, but you got to stay, 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 and you got the receiver stock blocking you, and you just got to like, 
but the the play's not going this way. He's bouncing it this way. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, oh fuck. So you just gotta come off that motherfucker and just mm -hmm. and if you just and there's setting the edge, but if you the only got out there, make that fucking tackle. Yep. You the only motherfucker out there too. You gotta make it happen. And so uh with especially playing safety, um safety you understand run fits way more because you're everything, bro. You're the fucking you're the last line of defense in the back and your last line of defense in the fucking run game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'll, I'll say reading at safety was, I'll say playing corner was harder than playing safety. Um, in terms of responsibility? In terms of accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. uh, I would say responsibility, let's say accountability because you're on the fucking island, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's all it's, you. It's all you're on the it's island out there, bro. You. Like, it's it, when when you get burnt off, like, it's, it's you can miss seeing a, a, a D lineman get laid out. You know what I mean? But if you get burnt off out as a quarter, everybody saw that shit. Everybody, you know what you I mean. Beat. You get beat. Everybody sees that yeah. shit. You know, um, especially like playing like tackle or something like that. Like playing left tackle, you get beat by that defensive end. Everybody sees that shit. You know what I'm saying? Or like how Khalil Mack used to throw motherfuckers into the fucking quarterback yeah. and shit. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But there was a guy who uh, from Blinn who actually went end up going all the way to the league. Um, who I played with, his name was Carrick Wheatfall. Um, he ended up signing with the Eagles right on. For, uh, as a receiver. Mm -hmm. And uh, even then, I'm on this highlight tape a few times. <laughs> Got to watch it back. I was like, oh, there I am. Him running past I my head. Uh, bro, like, I'm, that's, again, that's a dispar uh, the disparity of, like, how good guys are, bro. Like. So people are just physically gifted, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm thinking, like, okay, I'm, I'm at least, I'm at least on the team. You know what I mean? Like, I've gotten to that point. But there's motherfuckers who are here. You know what I'm saying? Who are just like that, you know? And that's just kind of like the, that's just, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, some things you just can't do shit about. Like, this motherfucker, like, you throw it up and he's going over the top of my head every time, bro. Like, you know? Not even because, like, I, I'm doing my best, bro, you know? But he just got, he got Don't it like matter. that. You know what I'm saying? Don't matter. Exactly. He ended up going to play at Fresno State, I believe. Pretty right good. On. West Coast. I will say, like, especially for his talent level. He wasn't like a – I'll say he's like a four or five guy yeah. speed-wise, mm -hmm. but he had – he knew how to run some routes. And they, they didn't like, he didn't like dropping that ball. He, he, he knew how to catch that ball. So, But I would say also – there was another dude that was there. His name was Antoine Jackson. Transferred from Auburn, right? So – and our coach called it – he called it a war daddy. I was like, a war daddy? He's like, a war daddy? What I call a war daddy – he will have that line filled with a hundred scouts every practice. Mm -hmm. He said, "Right now, we ain't got no war daddies out here, so, so you're gonna have to fucking work." You know what I mean? Because it's easier when you have that one guy. Goes back to the recruiting thing. You have that one guy, especially at a JUCO. You have that one cat that every coach is there to see. It makes it that much easier for you to get seen. You know what I'm saying? But if ain't nobody out there getting seen like that, ain't no coaches coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then, there you'd have those coaches. Uh, I would say the biggest coaches I saw on the sideline, the biggest schools I saw. I saw Washington. I saw Texas Tech. I did see uh, yeah. North Texas I, for sure. UT a couple times. Um, not very many SEC schools. Um Especially because you need that fucking again. I would think you see a lot of Mac mm. and uh, Sunbelt. Sunbelt, 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 a lot. I was about to say Sunbelt would, it's right there. They love them JUCO guys, bro. The Sun, the Sunbelt conference, especially, especially in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, God damn it, who is it? Or oh, Conference USA? Like, uh, is it Texas State, the one in San Marcos? Yes, yes. I feel like that would be out there a lot. Uh, even then, like, uh, yeah, I, that's another one. Like Texas State's not really a. A freshman school, if that makes sense, mm -mm. you know. Yep. Um, now I think about it, I, was, I never thought about it like that of a freshman school versus like a uh, like a freshman school. What I think of when I think of a freshman school, Duke. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. um, North Carolina, um, well, hey, Syracuse, Syracuse. Like a uh, ah, as a, as someone who understand. as someone who got recruited, it's like there's. You have you got to look at the options of what you have. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, let's take for example, 
best guy I can remember getting recruited was Tamarcus, right? Yes. Tamarcus had I remember when the smalls because like the Cincinnati's came, the uh, Texas State, the North Texas, and all that. It wasn't until about maybe offer five, I would say, where you started getting those like Arizona States and those um, Baylor and like uh, fucking like. I mean, every now and then you still get those UTEP and those like New Mexico states and stuff like that. But then you're getting those like P five t- Tennessee coaches texting you and stuff like that, bro. Like, yeah. like disparity between like New, Me- New Mexico State and Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? It's just like whoa, like whoa, like it's big boy football. Mm-hmm. And not that it's not big boy football in New Mexico State. You know what I mean? But it's power five, bro. Power five is just different. different you know. And it's like, um, and not to say those athletes are any. And it's the same. Bringing up what we were talking about earlier, mm. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. Why did he go to a Power Five fucking conference? Because though you can recruit way better yeah. and way easier. So the freshman, um, cl- essentially, is just a freshman school. Essentially, is a f- a school where. They get a lot of freshman recruits, yes. I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of transfers and whatnot. Because, uh, and those are the schools, more or less, who have a program in place. Have a program in place in which they develop players. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I call it like a freshman school. Or a, a school where you don't see a lot of guys transferring out of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, versus Purdue. school. Yeah, per, yeah, per, Purdue. It's a great one. Purdue. Um What's another one? Uh, Syracuse. I, I was like, yeah, Syracuse. Uh, I was gonna say Vanderbilt, to a certain extent. Because you had those at because the SEC ball. I think it changed a lot where NIL came through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because like Vanderbilt's an SEC school, but you don't see those like you don't necessarily get those marquee athletes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, like I said, Alabama. There's a reason like a. Alabama gets way more transfers than they get freshmen. You know what I'm saying? Because being a freshman at Alabama, you gotta be brother. Something else, man. Bruh, mm-hmm. you know, and like versus a school like uh, it will take for instance, like we just said, Dion. You know what I mean in Colorado? Yeah. Um, or excuse me, excuse me, Coach Prime. <laughs> um, right um but yeah, um, he had how many people transfer from fucking SEC? His whole roster. He had twelve SEC. Uh, we'll say this. He had ten scholarship ros- uh, roster players from the previous season stay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I want to say it was like sixty five transfers, mm-hmm. something one, like that. One of them was a a kid from K to the safety, uh, mm-hmm. forty three. If you watch the Trevor Woods. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. The white dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was I was saying I was like, the white Dion. And he's wearing forty three like a motherfucker, bro. Bro, I was like Dion. What? I was like Dion got a Dion got a white boy playing safety. And he's like, wearing 43. I was bro. like, you know he got to be cold, bro. And he ain't wearing 43, bro. I was that like, ain't no regular fucking number, bro. That's what I'm saying. I was like, and he's from, I found out he's from KDT, he's from Texas. No shit. Sure. Yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, okay. And, um, and you know he's playing some motherfuckers. He ain't playing no fucking Joe Schmoes. As someone who watched Deion, I met Deion Sanders, um, freshman year of high school, actually, mm-hmm. um, when they came and played. You weren't you weren't out of school at no. that point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he had a school in Dallas called Prime Prep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that, yeah. And so, um, yeah, they came down and we played against them in high school. I remember it was me, Noah, and Tamarcus. We, uh, there was the JV. Heron? Noah Heron? Yeah. That's crazy. They, they had a back-to-back um, doubleheader for the JV game and then the varsity game that Friday. And so they need somebody to just go out there and do the change, right? Mm-hmm. So we were like, fuck it, I'm going to go do the change. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying to see Dion. What you mean? <laughs> and so him up. We, we, no, he, we shook his hand, bro. It was like. Bro, this is a greatness. Hall of Famer, bro. Greatness. That's what I'm saying. And, well, like, we were sitting there on the bench, and uh, we looked over to our right like this. He had come up walk, just the swaggiest walk, bro. Just sunglasses. Shades on and everything, bro. Just glowing, bro. Bro, just, a swa- just the swaggiest dude you've ever seen, bro. And it's like, that's him. That's fucking That's prime. him. That's prime. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Timothy right there. Like, that's prime time. And uh, I remember, this is how I knew he was a good coach, bro. Is um, there was a guy, and this is in context. The first time I ever watched Deion Sanders coach on the sideline, there was a receiver who came off the field because I think he had uh, missed the ball or something like that. And Deion go, <laughs> Deion goes, son, why 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 did you miss the ball? And the kid goes, son, why did you miss the ball? Son, why you missed the ball? He's like, I wasn't expecting the ball, coach. What did he do? He goes, aren't you a receiver? Yeah. So don't you receive the ball? 
Yeah. He said it in his fucking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, so, 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 he said, son, ain't you a receiver? He said, yeah. So don't you receive the ball? Shouldn't you be expecting the ball? He said, so why is your receiver aren't, aren't you expecting the ball, Mr. Receiver? And he gave him that, gave him that look and just like. His own fucking receiver. Yeah, yes. Tremendous. Bro, I, I was just like, we just looked at each other like, imagine playing for this motherfucker, bro. <laughs> On your P's and fucking Q's. Bro, How are you gonna argue against that too, bro? That's, that's all. That's Hall of Fame, fucking. That's just a lot. One of the best CVs ever. Let me, let me break it down for you in the simplest way possible. You are a receiver. The quarterback throws you the ball. Okay. There's no ex- reason for you to not be expecting the ball. And like I said, as soon as that, I was like, God, this guy's amazing. I was like, God, this guy. He's different, bro. Oh, like, this guy's amazing. He's different. I'm like, what the fuck? And they ended up whooping us like 41 to like 19, some shit like amazing. that. Yeah. I ended up getting a picture with him at the end. Uh, it was like a blurry. Bro, you got to get that. It was, a, bl- it that. was a blurry ass. It look, it was a blurry ass sure. picture. It, it wasn't even like off my phone, okay? Yeah. It was a blurry ass picture because my moms were taking it, right? And so they had to hold it all sideways and shit. It was all shaky, so you barely see my face and shit. You can barely tell it's Dion, yeah. and it's, it's with five other kids too who I don't even know. So I'm like, Ugh. and then Dion's like, he but he's literally taking pictures. Like, okay, look, I got to go, and then dipped off. Like, gotta go back to Dallas and shit. I mean, that's where we should end. That's a really good. That, story, that, that was bro. a great story, that bro. That was a really good story. Dion Sanders was at my high school in freshman year. Same with the uh, Marcus Smart was at our high school too. Yeah, because the coach uh, mm-hmm. KB. Mm-hmm. KB. Shout out coach KB too. I appreciate you having me. Anytime, brother. I was really, I was like, damn. I, was, I, need, a minute. I need to do a podcast, but I was like, Kyle always christens my new places in for my first podcast. So. I'm always on podcasts, bro. It really, it really, One you're day, all- bro, when this shit gets paid, they're going to do the, which guest has had the most appearances on the Caleb Jackson podcast? Um, Kyle Lafaro? <laughs> it's going to be in triple digits. Be, be who? Like <laughs> Kyle Lafaro? <laughs> 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 my but, boy, hey, he makes some good bomb ass sandwiches, too. Some good food in general. You got to eat that salsa, bro. Already. But yes, sir. Always a pleasure, Mr. Kyle. Always be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on the channel. Let us know how we did, and let us know what you want us to talk about in the future. Sure and I, may, Caleb, man. I may or may not listen to y'all, but I like doing my own thing. But if y'all want me to talk about some good shit, let me know. But until next time, y'all be easy and be good. Peace.